North Korea fired three more missiles Thursday, including an intercontinental ballistic missile, which apparently failed in flight, but it triggered an alert for residents in central and northern Japan. Pyongyang launched a record number of 23 missiles on Wednesday. While the U.S. and South Korea are continuing their largest ever joint military exercises on the peninsula this week, believed to be one of the reasons why Kim Jong-un is acting this strongly, this is the U.S. is leading an effort on Iran to punish Iran at the U.N. for its treatment of women. Joining me now is the United States Ambassador to the United Nations, Linda Thomas-Greenfield. Madam Ambassador, it's good to see you. Thank you very much for coming. It's uh, great to be here. Well, I want to talk to you about your efforts on Iran, at, uh, to remove Iran from the U.N. Commission on the Status of Women. But first, let's talk about North Korea, because overnight there were more sure. missiles. And the U.S. is condemning the missile launches, but the U.N. has not been able, for years now, really, to enforce any of its resolutions against these launches. North Korea is heavily sanctioned, as you know. Isn't China, as well as Russia, but China now part of the problem, not enforcing sanctions and not doing anything to put the brakes on Kim Jong-un? Well, let me just say, again, we do condemn these actions. They're, they have uh, fired over 50 missiles in 2022 alone, and they are breaking multiple Security Council resolutions. These are resolutions, Andrea, that we and the Chinese and others worked together uh, to put uh, on, on the books against the uh, DPRK. But more, most recently, China has not joined us in condemning these actions in our efforts to add more sanctions on to uh, the ones that we already have on board. So we really do need to ramp up our efforts so that uh, the DPRK gets the message that what they are doing is unacceptable. We will be having a Security Council meeting tomorrow. Uh, to bring uh, this before the entire council. We're working closely with our Japanese and, and uh, Republic of Korea colleagues also uh, to ensure that uh, uh, the DPRK does not think that this is something that is acceptable. Won't you run into a roadblock from Russia and China there? You know, we have in the past. Uh, this is beyond, uh, really beyond the pale. What the DPRK has done over the past uh, over the past week. Uh, our hope is that we can bring them on board. Uh, but again, I'm not naive. Uh, but we will do our best. Now I want to turn to Iran. We've seen the powerful images, these protests across Iran, not just women, led by women, but men. Uh, you know, the oil workers getting into it, the unions. You want Iran expelled from the UN Commission on the Status of Women. How would that be accomplished? Well, first, uh, let me just say, yesterday we hosted uh, a what's called an ARIA formula meeting that brought together a large number of, uh, of member states, including the 15 members of the Security Council, into a meeting where we really amplified our uh, concerns about what is happening, the brutal uh, attacks that uh, this government has been imposing on women. And we also wanted to send a strong message to the women and as well as the men who are protesting that the international community is listening to them, that we are, that we support them. Uh, I announced yesterday, following uh, the vice president's announcement, that we will seek to have Iran removed uh, from the CSW. We don't think that it is uh, it is appropriate for a country who violates the human rights of women. Uh, to be on such a council. So we will be working toward that over the course of the next few weeks, uh, working with all of our colleagues who are also uh, members, many of whom joined us in this call, uh, to see that we have them removed from, uh, uh, from the council. I do want to ask you about Ukraine. Uh, first of all, there's a new poll from The Wall Street Journal showing that 30 percent of Americans uh, think that we're doing too much to aid Ukraine. And that includes 48 percent 
48 percent of Republicans. Now, given the midterms and the strength of, at least the po in the polls of the Republican Party, the possibility that they might take over the House and even the Senate, um, how concerned are you that the popular support in the U.S., the political support to continue fundings at these levels, is going to be diminished, especially given inflation and problems here at home? Uh, Andrea, uh, right now we have bipartisan support for our actions and our activities related to uh, Ukraine, because we all understand that this attack in Ukraine is really an attack on all of the values that we stand for. It's an attack on the UN Charter. It's an attack on human rights. And, and the Russians are committing crimes against uh, humanity. They're committing war crimes in, uh, in Ukraine. And the Ukrainian people are fighting on all of our behalfs, because what Russia is doing in Ukraine today could be done elsewhere tomorrow. So I believe that the American public do uh, accept and understand why it is so important that we continue to support the Ukrainian people's efforts to defend themselves against this brutal attack by, by the Russians. We are hoping over the course of, of the coming weeks and months that the Russians will come to their senses and pull their troops out of Ukraine. Uh, and end this brutal war and go to the negotiating table to uh, to work out their differences with the Ukrainians at the negotiating table. We have pushed for that. We tried to support that if, at, uh, before uh, Russia made the uh, move inside of Ukraine. They would not accept a diplomatic uh, uh, solution to deal with uh, the security concerns that they say they have. I think they thought that they could go into Ukraine and in two weeks bring the Ukrainian people to their knees. And the Ukrainians have fought valiantly. And part of the reason they fought valiantly is because we have been there to support them. The uh, Europeans have been unified with us to support them. NATO has been unified in supporting them. And we will continue to support them until Russia uh, remove uh, their troops from Ukraine. Uh, do you think that, in terms of Russia and Vladimir Putin, would there be some value uh, if the president would meet with Vladimir Putin at the G20 to discuss the possibility of, of getting Brittany Griner and Paul Whelan back home? Well, as you know, the president had an interview earlier uh, in the week and said that for that purpose, he would be willing to meet with Putin. And just to say that the pres this is one of the highest priorities that the president has, every single member of, of the cabinet, this is a priority for us, that we bring every American, including Brittany Griner, home to, to her family. And uh, I know that efforts will continue uh, to be made to do just that. Well. Ambassador, I know you're very busy. We will follow all of your efforts at the UN on all these subjects, especially the, the Iranian women, uh, those valiant women that you've been fighting for. Thank you so very much for being with us today. Good. Thank you, Andrea. It was great to be here with you.